Hi, this is a tutorial coming to you from the Maryland Archaeological Conservation Laboratory on how to apply paper labels to artifacts. When we store artifacts, we want to make sure that we retain their all-important provenience of where they came from, and so we label the artifacts in three different ways, on the bag that holds the artifact, on an interior tag in the bag, and on the artifact itself in case you're going to pull that artifact for research. You should always check your standards and guidelines for your repository to make sure you're using an artifact labeling technique that they call for. This is one of the methods that we allow in our standards and guidelines at the Mac Lab. We like the paper labeling method because it's archival, it's proven to have good longevity, it's very legible, it works on no matter what the color of your artifact is, dark or light, and it's fairly easy to do even for volunteers, for people with uh, maybe bad eyesight or arthritis. So it's, it's a very helpful kind of labeling method that, that we're very excited to have just adopted. So the first thing you want to do when you're applying paper labels is gather all the materials that you're going to need for this operation. And one of the materials is the acid-free paper. Um, you also need a laser jet printer, not an inkjet printer because the laser jet ink won't run when you apply the label and the adhesive. Um, you're going to need scissors to cut the labels out, or I find that a handy dandy paper trimmer really speeds things up and prevents hand cramping if you're cutting those labels too often. Um, and you can use it to cut the labels in strips um, and get you a little bit closer to that detailed label cut. Um, you also need some kind of brush to apply the label. We like to use these little jars that have the built-in brush lid so that you can easily close the adhesive and save it for later. Um, tweezers are super helpful for placing the label and we use the adhesive Liquitex. It's conservator approved. Unlike a B72 in a solvent like acetone or something, it won't make the label sort of run. It's water soluble, so it also doesn't cause any fumes from the solvent that's in it. You can use the water to thin it out for certain objects, or you can let it dry and thicken for other kinds of objects, depending on what the porosity of the artifact. Um, and it's just healthier in terms of breathing in fumes and things like that. When you print the paper labels, that's kind of an important step because you want to cut down on your cutting time as much as possible. That's the most tedious part about this process. You can easily use Excel to set your row height fairly tight for purposes of cutting the labels out um, and eliminating any extra cuts you might have to make to trim them. You also have to choose your font very carefully for this process. You have to make sure that you use a font where, for example, the lowercase l and the number one look different because you need to make sure you're actually tracking your provenience without causing ambiguity in terms of the label you're putting on there. We use sans serif fonts like Calibri, Verdana, and Tahoma. All of those are good ones. And then you also have to choose the font size wisely. Four or five works well for a font size for this process because again, you want it to be as small as possible but still be readable. So the labels that we are using for this demo today that I've done in an Excel spreadsheet, these are Calibri font size five. We are going to cut out our paper labels. I definitely like using a very lightweight paper trimmer that you line up the row just so. Zoop, go right across and then you've got a little strip of labels and you can fairly easily line them up and then use your scissors to trim very close to the numbers and I even like to cut out the little white parts in between in case the labels might be too long and so I make two different piles as I go the little white parts in between and then the labels go in the big pile over here. If I'm gonna be labeling some super tiny artifacts and I really want them to have a label, we only require labeling for things that are half inch or more, but um, this method I find to be super useful. You cut your vertical rows as close as possible, then you can take these little white strips that are in between that I've kind of cut out and you just snap them off. So snap off the little white strips, and then once you're done with that, you've got just your strips of labels here that again are nice and tightly done, and then you can precision cut them with the scissors. So these are also going to be very narrow. You can't get quite as narrow and exact with a paper trimmer. 
Then once you have the labels cut out, I highly recommend they just kind of sit in a pile on your piece of paper, preferably a piece of paper for a couple of reasons. One is that it's super easy to pick up a label with the brush that has the adhesive on it. And that way you're not getting adhesive on the surface that you're working on. If you're done with them and you want to stick them in a bag, you can just pick up the paper and pour it out into the bag to save for later. And also you want them to be face up when you're getting ready to apply them. And once you get all the face up ones gone, you can just kind of flip it over with the piece of paper. Uh, pro tip, do not do this in a room with a fan and don't breathe too hard on the pile because it can be disastrous. Now we're actually going to apply some labels to artifacts here. When you have an artifact that's a little bit porous, you want a little bit thicker adhesive to use. When you have an artifact like a glazed ceramic that is not porous, you can get away with a little bit less thick. So one good trick for applying the artifact labels is to do your non-porous artifacts first, and then while you're working, your adhesive will dry out a little bit as you use it, and then do your porous ones last, and you have a nice thick adhesive. So what we've done here, and I'll do it on a, a glazed piece here, is you get the adhesive on your brush, First, put a little bit of adhesive on the artifact, then use the brush to pick up the label, and then get more adhesive and cover it all up. Try to get the bubbles off. They usually go away on their own, but just in case you don't want the bubbles on there. And then you let it dry. So let's try that again. A little adhesive on your brush, a little adhesive on the artifact, Use the sticky brush to pick up your label and then a little more adhesive on top. Try to get the bubbles off. And then set it down. And it does help, so I have a little bit runny adhesive right now. So something like a clay pipe stem, which is fairly porous, is gonna soak that up really fast. So you either have to get the label on really fast or use a slightly thicker adhesive. Now I'm a little crooked here. If you don't like the placement and I just want it to be all lined up perfectly, that's when the tweezers come in super handy. Also for if you have an artifact that isn't flat, like a pipe stem, you can use the tweezers to make sure the edges go down on the sides so that you get a good, nice, solid connection between the label and the artifact. So you don't always have to use the tweezers. The brush is, works pretty well for picking up the label most of the time, but the tweezers are definitely helpful if you're placing a label and it gets a little bit off or for making sure that you can push it down a little bit better. The brush only works so well for that. If you mess up a label and you put the wrong one on the wrong artifact, all you have to do is wet the artifact um, and then you can use the tweez tweezers or something else to scrape it off. These, this is all water soluble, so you can just take it off that way. So the last step in paper labeling and the one that gets screwed up the most, which, you know, it's hard to know why, is to just let everything dry. Do not put the artifacts away until everything is completely dry. Otherwise, they're gonna stick together in the bag and when you pull it apart, your label is ruined. I always leave paper labels out to dry overnight so that you don't undo all of the work that you just did. That's pretty much all there is to it with the paper labeling. Again, check with the repository that you're taking the artifacts to before you choose a labeling method. Uh, but if you want to know more about how the Mac Lab does artifact labeling in terms of things like what to do, where on the artifact to label, which artifacts to label, which ones not to label, and what not to do, all of those things are in the Maryland Archaeological Conservation Laboratory's standards, which we will link to somewhere in this content. The labeling instructions have nice visuals to help volunteers know this is what you do when you're labeling. This is what you don't do when you're labeling. And these are the artifacts you should and shouldn't be labeling. So go to that if you wanna know more about how the Mac Lab does our labeling of artifacts.